you use compressed air to run any of your power tools, you'll probably know that it's very useful to be able to measure the air pressure at the inlet of the tool. You'll probably know what the pressure is at your compressed air tank, and you'll probably know what the pressure is just downstream of your regulator. But once it's gone through all of your various filters, manifolds, pipe work and things like that, you might not know what the pressure is here at the most important point, um, the actual pressure running the tool. I'll cover separately how to set up your compressed air system to run your tools and how to actually use this, but for now I just want the ability to measure the pressure. I first bought a small gauge and regulator that's meant to have a little knob on it. It fell off. Um, so this theoretically will do that job because you can put a quick coupling on either end, plug that into the tool, you'll have the, the measurement and it also gives you the ability to regulate and adjust for my use and to use power tools. I don't really see a good reason why you would regulate at this point. I don't think you're going to get much flow through a small little regulator like that. You're much better off using a proper regulator like this um, that can get a decent flow through it, go through your pipework system. So not only do I not want the regulator, I also want something a little bit higher quality than this. So you can see that this is just a short-ish parallel thread, so it's quite difficult to get that to seal. And it just feels very plasticky. So I'm going to make one out of brass and copper pipework, um, just using normal plumbing tools. I've got my bit of 15 millimeter copper pipe, and I've got some fittings. So I've got a, a T-piece here, male and a... <coughs> female quarter inch end feed fitting, so a um, quarter inch to eighth of an inch adapter to put the gauge on. So when you're fitting these um, with the end feed couplings you're going to be putting this one over and it's a good thing to just measure and note down how much material you need to actually insert all the way into the end feed coupling. It's about 10 millimetres, so nice and easy to remember. And for that one it's exactly the same, so um, I'll need this to be at least 20 millimetres, plus a small bit in the middle to allow me to actually do the soldering. Don't dock the vise too tight because it will um, because it'll crush the pipework. So cut that at 25 millimetres. I'll just use a little pipe cutter, but you could use a hacksaw or whatever you want. One tip here, if you're going to be um, doing the same thing as me and cutting these small lengths it's easier to sand these using this long emery cloth while the pipe's a bit longer so once you've cut that off it's a bit hard to hold it and sand it so um, I'd recommend just sanding it first because you're going to need to do that later and then cutting it but do what you want. Obviously if you're doing a, a longer bit of pipe you only need to sand down the pieces that you're actually going to be soldering together because um, it's such a short stub it's pretty much impossible not to do the whole thing so Nice clean cut. Um, you just need to, to give um, a bit of abrasion to the inside of each of the joints. Um, I just use emery cloth for this. You can get special brushes which do it, but um, like wire brushes, but I don't have one. Not too sure if this is needed on the brass ones or not. Um, I think for the copper ones it takes the oxidation layer off. Um, I don't know if you get that with brass or not. So if anyone knows, um, leave a comment. I'll just do it anyway, just uh, just to be on the safe side. So once that's done, I like to just give it a, um, a wipe with a, a damp a kitchen roll or something, just to get all of the dust and that sort of stuff off it. Okay, once that's done, um, you're gonna need some flux, some solder, and a heat source. This is a blowtorch, not a very big one. I could do with a larger one, really, um, but I'm hoping this is going to do the job. So as this is a smallish piece, I'm going to assemble it all together first. So for each piece, before you um, put it together, just need to put some flux onto it. Okay, so there it is. Now I'm going to put it in the vise, heat it all up, so it's quite hot, and then just dab the solder onto it. Hopefully it will um, it'll seal nicely, but uh, let's have a go.
Okay, so that's cooled down now. Um, like I said, not an overly neat job. Plumbing isn't one of my strong points, so I need to work on my soldering skills, but hopefully it's going to hold its pressure. Um, a bit worried about this top one. So there it is. Um, I just had to refit this top one as it didn't look quite right to me. What I tend to do is I'll just heat it up um, and once it's at the right temperature, once you dab the solder on it, you'll see it make a ring all the way around. And if it doesn't do that and it starts just to make big lumps of solder on it, you've probably done something wrong. So I think these are all okay. Is that one okay? I think these are okay. I'm going to give it a go, pressurise it up and see what happens. If you're looking for soldering advice, I'd recommend um, searching YouTube and finding a better video of it because I'm not very good at explaining it or doing it. And I've just got the, the female quick coupling and the male quick coupling adapter and the pressure gauge would go on top. There's the finished article. Pressure gauge there. It's a bit big, but with the fittings I was using, that's the smallest I could make it. Um, not a huge deal, as I'm not going to keep this connected all the time. It's just for information. So um, let's slowly pressurise it up and um, see whether it works. So I'm ready to give this a little bit of a test now. Clearly, I'm not just going to sling 10 bar through it straight away. So what I'll do is I'll connect it up. I'm going to connect it just to a blowgun at first. There's probably some sort of dust and swarf in here, and I don't want to put that into my nicer tools. When I'm testing for leaks, what I like to do is, this isn't what it says on the, it's not what is on the label, and this is just all purpose clean, I think it's like the, the yellow flash stuff. So I just spray this onto the joint. And if they're leaking, you'll just see little bubbles come out of it. You could use fairy liquid or any sort of detergent, really. And I'm just going to slowly increase the pressure. Okay, so we're at about uh, 90 bar there now. And the tank pressure is a bit more than that, about 10 bar. Okay, that all seems to be holding pretty nicely. So now if you want to see the pressure at the tool, I made a bit of a mistake here as the gauge is, is upside down. It's always quite difficult with this sort of thing as you want to tighten it but you can't then orientate which way the gauge is, so um, I can probably give that another tighten around. Hopefully it won't strip thread or maybe even loosen it off just a little bit. But anyway, so this now lets me measure at the tool what the pressure is after it goes through my system. <laughs> So that's all there is to it. If you want to know how to actually set up your air tools and your home compressor system, um, check out my other video and have fun with it.